Hello, and welcome to Maximal Fire. I'm Alex. And I'm Johnny. And this is The Road to the Warp. So, Johnny, good to see you again. How have you been, mate? Oh, been all right. Been all right. Been good. Been eagerly awaiting the LI release. It is coming sooner than you think. Uh, or or not. Um, sooner than... Or... We, we thought that this was coming in August, right? So it's not coming sooner than we think. And I, I think certainly all of our money was on it being at least on like last weekend's pre-order for, for this weekend. So I think at this moment in time, I'm thinking it's probably going to be November. Sure. Maybe. Uh, they have, yeah, they've like teased that there's going to be some, uh, an ally battle report in the latest White Dwarf. Um, so that's a good sign, I guess. Uh, maybe, you know, maybe it will be hot off the tails of that. I feel like this release was pro this White Dwarf was probably meant to happen while the game was out. But if nothing um, else, it's it's go it's going to be good to see kind of like how the game works. Oh yeah. It's almost going to be sure. like a, li a little bit of a preview without too many of the rules in there, but like of how the game flows, you know, the sort of mechanics that we can expect to see in it, which I think would be quite interesting to see assuming they've not changed any rules uh, since the um the the pulling um, but yeah, me and uh, me and Johnny are actually getting ready this weekend to go up uh, to the middle of England and take part in the Battle for the Taraninth Cluster um, campaign weekend as part of the Greetings from the Warp um, event, which does a lot of heresy as well. So we're taking part in the Adeptus Titanicus side, and it is the f I think it's the first narrative event that both of us have attended together. Um, it's the yes. first. It's the first narrative event that I've attended in two and a half years. I think it is actually. So, yeah, but I'm really looking forward to it. It's. It looks like a. It's going to be a good couple of days. And um, well, I, I've heard lots of good things about the events that the guys from the Greetings of the Warp um, do. And this particular one is being run um, by Tom Stallard, who I've attended um, one of his events before. It was really, really good. And as part of the Advancing Fire podcast. Um, which he started doing uh, with a couple of his mates as well. So if you do get the opportunity, go have a listen to the Advancing Fire podcast. Um, they're just starting out. Um, give them a, a like, give them a follow on Spotify. And um, yeah, it's uh, it's it, it's good AT content and Legion's Imperialis content as well. That's what they're going to be looking into doing. So yeah. Um, oh yeah. But yeah, it'd be good. Um, we're going up with um, our friend Oliver um, and we figured we'd put out this podcast um, kind of just to sort of hype ourselves up and also give you kind of a glimpse into kind of like what we're thinking and how we prep for tournaments and maybe discuss a little bit of the event pack and yeah, um, hype ourselves up for the weekend. And and you've got some plans for some oh, filming yeah. this weekend as well, haven't you, Johnny? Yeah, yeah. We're going to look at doing a uh, a vlog of our kind of experience up north um, and... Yeah, it should be pretty cool. It's, you know, the first time we're going to do it, so we'll give it a good try. Um, and yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be it's going to be a cool weekend. Yeah, and if you want to see what I look like at five o'clock in the morning while trying to drive um, up to kind of Northampton Way, then that'll be the place to go and check it out. It may just be a lot Absolutely. of me cursing and swearing and telling everybody to be quiet in the back seat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. But we shall see. Um, so yeah, we're going to do the, the vlog, aren't we? And then I guess the, we'll come back and we'll do another little mini podcast and we'll talk about how it went. Um, yeah, it's just uh, it's nice to not be running a, an event and to kind of just enjoy it for what it is. Oh, for sure. Get to meet all the people, get to play some AT. I mean, what could be better, right? Beer. And apparently there's beer as yeah. well. And apparently there's like a barbecue or something. Like I understand that they do epic food there as well, so... Excited Insane. for that. Yep. Um, oh, yeah. 
Before we get into that, um, we'll just give our, our new patrons a shout out. So big thank you very much to John Wallace Howell and Dan, who have signed up uh, since the last um, podcast went out. Thank you very much, guys, for joining us. If you are interested in supporting the show, there's now a couple of ways that you can do this. Um, we've kind of tried to diversify um, how people can support the channel. The main one is Patreon. You can back us from as little as one pound and that goes up to like three pounds and five pounds and you get additional bonuses and benefits for backing us at those higher tiers like 10 percent off battle bling um we've also started experimenting with all patrons that you can now watch um our videos um ad free through patron so patreon so if you um do watch us on youtube the ads can be super annoying you can now find it as well um directly on our patreon site um but that's one way. And the other way is, we talked about it last time, but Max More Fire merch is now live, is now available on Redbubble. Um, so you can like literally get whatever you want. I've not been fussy. I'm happy to put our logo on <laughs> any bit of tat that uh, Redbubble uh, can do. I think you can get cat mats with Max More Fire on it. You can get mouse pads, T-shirts, hats, water bottles stickers mini skirts yeah it's um the possibilities are endless <laughs> maybe we put in a a rapid order before the event and we come decked in entire maximal fire like apparel so Epi top jumper jacket trousers shorts on top of them obviously maximal fire hats multiple hats because they'll probably do different styles right I'm hoping that I'm not well, going to show my age here and you're just going to shoot this whole thing down, but I I hope you've seen the film Wayne's World. Yes. Right, okay. Absolutely. I'm picturing while, but... picturing the scene where Garth is just sat wearing all Reebok stuff, talking about selling out. <laughs> yeah. I think yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that might have to be, yeah, us. Um, be a mascot. Yeah. But no, for everything that you buy through Redbubble, um, there is a very, very small markup on that, which goes on top of the costs that the printers take, and we get whatever that little markup is. So anything that you buy through Redbubble, the channel will also get a very small hit back. Um, and not forgetting as well, if you use the Battle Bling affiliate link, that's the third option. Anything that you buy through the Battle Bling website using our affiliate link, the channel gets another little tiny bit of, um, of kickback from that as well. So... If you do want to support us and any of that sounds interesting then please jump in and uh yeah get spending oh yeah <laughs> um one of our friends uh sarah she has just uh, launched her own painting uh, commission service now sarah is uh, like a um somebody who's very very active on the atc and she's been on the discord server i think pretty much since we launched it um, and on top of that, she's an excellent painter and she does <clears throat> sort of um, event award winning uh, work. She's won plenty of best painters in her time. And she has just opened Siren Studios. So if any of you are in the market for um, for some commission painting, I would recommend that you go ahead and uh, hit Sarah up and uh, yeah, see see what you can come to an agreement on she is very very good at titans but she is willing to paint anything you know like any commission studio um but certainly if you've seen uh if you've been on the kind of 80 hashtags then you've probably seen some of sarah's work already she's quite prolific um so yeah do give it a shout we'll put the link in the description and and you can take a look and um and yeah uh, check out siren studios oh yeah i i heard she's currently painting up the um toddler sized Cthulhu model that you um <laughs> that you get you got from uh, Cthulhu Death May Die. Yeah. Amazing war game Kickstarter. Um and yeah this lit literal like child size Cthulhu. Uh, it's ridiculous. Statue. It is it is an absolutely Indeed. ridiculous model. Why why you would need it in your life I don't know. But it, so, it, it doesn't stop it from being really fucking cool. Yeah, you get like a you get like a a, a a rule set where you actually fight on Cthulhu, like you do the last mission on the big Cthulhu uh, uh, miniature. So yeah, extremely sick, uh, and I'm sure she'll uh, yeah, do an amazing job. I, I think she's got a um a war a war breaker in a backlog as well. I think she's painting up a, wow. a war breaker. Um, oh yeah. So yeah, um, 
yeah, follow her on on Instagram. Again, we'll put her Instagram details, I think, on um, in the description as well. Uh, and last but not least, well, in fact, last but not least, we've actually got two more quick little shout outs that we wanted to get in. The first is to our friends at Loon Constructs. So um, you may have heard we've mentioned Loon a couple of times. We put their um, details in the description um, before now. And they are a printing service in the UK, which deals pretty much exclusively with grimdark terrain. Um, and we were very, very fortunate enough that Doug from Loon Wolf has actually gifted us with a essentially like a, a good tables worth of, uh, of terrain free of charge to help support our events. And until that turned up, I'd not really kind of seen like what he does or the quality of his prints or anything but you know a few of the other ones in the uk had gone down they were well priced um they you know were very competitive on the market and so they were a really good kind of newcomer to the scene to kind of fill some of the gaps that some of the previous um printers had kind of left behind when this stuff kind of came through the post i wondered if he'd done some kind of special deal or kind of special service for us um as a channel because um when everything arrived not only it was it like really good quality prints like i couldn't i certainly couldn't print any better than it is at home but this is how it arrived so it arrived pre-assembled um primed in gray primer and magnetized so absolutely insane like incredible there's there's literally nothing that i need to do with it out of the box and what they specialize in is that service so if you buy something from them they will assemble it for you they'll clean it up wash it um magnetize it if it requires magnetizing they will prime it so literally all you have to do is paint it straight out of the box um which I have never heard anybody kind of doing that level of service, and especially at the price that they're doing. I got, I received, as well as getting my favourite um, 3D printed model of all time, the Samson, um, I also received the landing pad, um, which is the ALS landing pad by Grim Dr. Rain, and it came mounted already on a um, MDF board, Um these in particular are uh, an absolute nightmare when it comes to getting the lines straight and they sometimes require a bit of filling um, as i found out when i did my printing he's pre-filled it he's painted it well, sprayed it with you know high quality primer there is nothing that i need to do before i need to start painting that so i just felt really obliged to kind of give him like the kudos that he he deserves like it's it's really good quality prints really really impressed really and he if you go onto his website there isn't kind of a huge amount of products that he sells on there for grimdark terrain and there's a reason for that so he sells a lot of the kind of standards like let's call them stcs that um that grimdark puts out and they are usually slightly cheaper than his competitors have been before so i think that the samson i believe is about 40 pounds um the big excavator, which was normally like ninety to a hundred pounds in most places, about eighty quid. So he's he's already competitive, um, but he's more interested in having a conversation with you about what do you want on your board, what do you foresee for your board. Like the grimdark terrain stuff can be quite intimidating to know what you want if you've never dabbled with it, because it's got now thousands of different components that you can do to to create something. So he wants that conversation with you. And then you will essentially build your boards together and he will put it all together, print it and ship it out to you, which is, is truly awesome. So if you've got something very particular in mind, you need something for an event, give Doug a message on his uh, on his website and um, and see what he can do for you. But yeah, definitely two thumbs up from Maximal Fire. Really, really pleased with. Oh, yeah. Insane service. Really, really good. Yeah. Yeah. And that's all coming your way to paint for Beachhead, just so you know. I cannot wait yeah because i've painted Man, enough terrain paint. it's your turn <laughs> no i i am i'm so stoked because the quality of, of all of that looks insane um i will 
I will do it justice. I mean, we've already we've already got some good quality grim dark terrain boards um, as it is, but mm. having another one as well, um, mm-hmm. yeah, I think that brings like we're going to have something like half of our terrain at our events is going to be grim dark, which is amazing because it looks fantastic. Um, and there's nothing really which kind of captures the vibe as much as well beyond maybe the official stuff. Like the, the in some respects, it's be- I prefer the grim dark aesthetic. It's it's really really good. For sure, for sure. Might do a snowy theme again. Yeah, why not? Add it to my current collection of snow stuff. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's going to look sick. Oh, give wait. yourself a bit of versatility on that board as well, so it's not just rocks. Exactly, exactly. Like a little uh, research outpost or, or something like that. Oh, you know what and you could the, do? Uh, the snowy rocks. Oh, go on. Hear me out. The thing. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, 100%. Do it like John Carpenter, Arctic base, mm-hmm. kind of that'll work yep. really well with some of the bunkers and all of that kind of stuff. With the landing pad, yeah, for sure. Um, the tower as well. Yep. Like you can maybe be a little trek away. Oh, God. And we've got two, oh, yeah. two of the little flak bunkers as well. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That'll look great. We'll just have to buy another board, uh, another snow mat now, just to uh, to fit all of the extra stuff that's going to be coming off your other board. But uh, <laughs> it'll be all right. Um, oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Last but not least, um, Troublemaker Games. Um, they sent me a very exciting little box of happiness the other day. Um, and I managed to get my hands on a free copy uh, that they provided free of charge to us of their new City Crushers game. Um, this was a Kickstarter which launched at the beginning of this year. And if you like AT and you like Orcs, which is something which is a little bit kind of missing from the moment. I haven't I haven't read through all of the book yet, so I don't know if they specifically call them orcs. But I mean, look at it. I mean, it's it yeah it, it's it's orcs. Um, it's orcs with a C. Wait, no, they have that copyrighted too. <laughs> I thought they I thought they were orcs now because they couldn't copyright. Oh them. yeah, because they can't. Yeah, yeah, They're orcs. Hundred percent. Hundred percent orcs. Um. Yeah, big stompy robots um, of an orcish kind. So we've got a couple, uh, well, we've got a a whole set of that that we're going to be painting up. Um, We'll probably do a review on them when we've kind of got through all of that. And if time permits, we'll try and do like a demonstration back back rep or something. Um, Oh, yeah. But I I understand that the game is going to be shipping from uh, to all of its Kickstarter backers. It should be going out soon. Um, but it's also going to be available to buy separately from Vanguard Games um, as the box, uh, which is uh, 110 quid. And let me just... That's for the big box that they did, which includes 10 scenery sprues, and we already know that we love the Troublemaker game scenery. Um, so there's lots of ruins in that, as well as built, uh, regular buildings. Um, there is six capital crushers. Those are the big... Um, they're on 80 millimeter sized bases, so kind of a little bit bigger than Warhound, I believe. And then it comes with 16 City Crushers, which are kind of stomper size um, models. Um, and also an airbase, the, the, the airbase that they do um, on Troublemaker Games. So yeah, like really good value. Uh, 110 quid, pretty good, pretty competitive compared to other games, especially with the amount of plastic you're going to get inside of that. So really looking forward to playing City Crushers. Hell yeah. Get our orcs on. Yeah. Yeah, I've already got a colour scheme in mind. Oh, what are you going? I think I'm going to have to go kind of like um, the quite stereotypical Bad Moon orcs. Oh, yeah. So yellow with the green heads. Um, Mm -hmm. I've done a lot of red before, and I did um, Evil Suns when I had my orc army, so I don't want to do Evil Suns again, but I'm going to try and go for a very orky, Bad Moony sort of vibe, I think, for mine. Yeah, I, I was thinking Evil Sons. I, I'm so down to do just a big red stompy horde of rock'em sock'em robots. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. So yeah, we will get you some decent photos, and we'll get you some uh, some painted versions of that when we uh, when we've had a chance to to mm. get it all together. Um. Whew. Okay. Wow. We, ha- we haven't had a lot of news to kind of talk about recently, so that's quite a lot. It feels in one in one go. Mostly my own fault for forgetting Sarah last time and the Siren Studios shout out. 
Um, oh, yeah. But also, if you haven't seen our or listened to our last episode, we did the uh, the Titan tier list, and we knew that that episode was going to be a chunky boy. Yeah, um, that was a bit long. I think that came in about two and a half hours in the end. So we tried to strip out and keep all of the news out of last episode, um, so that we can, yeah, just focus on the on the content because we knew it was going to take a while. Ah, right. Yeah. Um, before we move on, last bit. Uh, we did a listener's survey. Uh, we put out um, uh, like a, a Google survey link um, into the ether about a week or so ago. We've already had over 100 replies to it, which is amazing that over 100 people kind of care. Um, but if you haven't and if you would like to participate, the link for that will also be in the description. This is what we kind of try and do around this sort of year to try and work out what do you guys like, what what formats do you like, what content do you want to see, um, and also do a bit of fact-finding, like how good a job are we doing on sort of promoting like our website and um, getting people onto the Discord and making people aware of the other things that we do, like the FAQ uh, pack that we release. So if you can spend literally five minutes to uh, to complete that, that would be really appreciated uh by both by both of us one of the i had a look at some of the answers already one of the things and the question which was like why do you listen or tune in or subscribe to maximal fire one of the responses was johnny's mullet hey let's go let's go it was worth it it was all worth it in the end the mighty mullet and uh and hair i think uh, shout out to uh anonymous maximal fire fan um yeah i could probably find okay. out who it was exactly if you want to send him a gift basket <laughs> no that's right <laughs> <laughs> right okay let's let's talk events so oh hell yeah barrow uh, ba- barrow battle for the the terranith cluster two-day narrative event um this weekend it's a big one 2500 points aside so oh yeah considerably bigger than we normally kind of have it and there's going to be four games split over two days um having a look through their event pack i was sort of quite relieved to see that the standard restrictions on a castus nights seem to still be there for the weekend um, i think as we oh, talked wow. about last week um when you go to other events it's interesting to see what restrictions other people put in and that seems to be generally kind of um in there um interestingly they've also kept the warbringer carapace going to be run with full arc oh actually that means i need to adjust my list because i'm 25 points better off oh look at that there yeah. we go. so that was um something that the community's kind of picked up on uh since the release of i think it was a loyalist legions book wasn't it um mm. there was a typo in a book which said that the carapace weapon on the Warbringer was Arc and not um, Corridor. And everyone was like, that makes so much sense. Yes, yeah. n- now there is a reason to take the Warbringer. Um, and then they changed it back again with the, the traitor um, book. Uh, it's a shame. I, I, I That would have been a, a happy accident if they'd have persisted that because it would give um, the Warbringer a bit more purpose like we were kind of talking about last time. Um, mm, for sure. And one of the interesting things as well is they say, we want to see feel, uh, players fielding multiple Titan Legions w- working together. The additional stratagem point rule for this is not in play for the event. If you want to run Legio Mortis and Legio Furians together, then your opponent would not get two additional stratagem points. That's quite nice. I quite like that. Oh, yeah. And I think we're, you're going to be talking quite a lot of stratagem points anyway at 2,500 points. Um, yeah. We're going to have a hand of 10 stratagems um to choose and we're going to spend eight points so having two more is kind of a little bit excessive but i wouldn't think it's a um it's a it's an example of a really good uh event planning and event design right because it both lets you have some narrative fun with with two legios which is obviously you know not a thing that you'll commonly do both casually or um or obviously competitively um but also then people that don't have like one huge Titan Legio um, are still able to sign up and go to an event, which 
narrative events, I think, are usually less popular than competitive ones anyway. So you want to kind of open up that catchment area quite wide. Um, I don't and, know if they're. Well, I don't know if they're less popular. I think that they appeal to a different type of player. Um, true. I think there's often a draw to go to tournaments because there's prizes more often than not at the end of it. Whereas you're not kind of like expecting prizes from a from a a narrative. But there's also, um, you know, narratives for them to work. They have to be kind of reasonably. That you have to be invested in 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 kind of the narrative at the end of the day, so they have to be well run. I think it's definitely easier running a tournament, um, but you know, I mean, there's certainly a lot more tournament events out there, so I wouldn't be surprised. I don't think that that is because they're more unpopular. I think less people are running them because they take more work, um, and maybe they're just. I think the meta has kind of shifted slightly. That used to be all narrative. And then it moved to tournament. Mm. So I would like to see more, t- more more narrative events. Like, if put up, please put on more narrative events, everybody. Yeah, I don't think narrative events were necessarily too much more work in the sense of on on the day, because obviously the players will be a lot more self governing when it's casual games, um, just having a bit of fun doing some narrative games, you know what I mean? Um, you're not going to get people being quite so salty that we sometimes see. Yeah, you're not going to get salty players. Um, there'll definitely be a bit, be a much better vibe. Not that Titanicus events don't have a good vibe already, because they do. Like The player base is awesome, but like there's less on the line. We're just here to make a good story, whether you win or lose, right? Yeah. Um, I think with the narrative, there's more, more planning involved up front. Prior. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah. God, oh, I'm so excited. But it's going to be so cool. I, I think you, I, I wonder if the reason that they put that rule in there is because they acknowledge that probably not that many people have got 2,500 points worth of Titans. Oh, so, sure. so to kind of open it up to be more accessible to your point, a lot of people are probably going to have two 1750s and then you can kind of smash those together again. You know, or maybe bring out your Warbreaker or so, uh, Warbringer, uh, Warbringer, um, Warmaster, um, Titan mm-hmm. as well. So, I mean, there is some spicy combinations that you can do with two Legios oh, at that many points. Yes. <laughs> spicy. <laughs> um, I, I, I've had to regulate myself a little bit because uh, I have a fair few Titans in my cabinet behind me. Um, and you know, we have the podcast to, to think about and yeah. our, and our, Whoa. and our reputation to think about. Um, you say, well, cause I know, I know what you're bloody well taking. You, so I thought one of us, one of us needed to regulate ourselves. Right. You and me are complete opposites because I, I am, I'm pretty well regulated when it comes to normal tournaments. But like I've been let off the off the leash now. Like I'm I'm going for it. I'm gonna like I I play melee vulpalists in tournaments and suffer so that at a narrative event I can combine them with Tritonus and do some janky bullshit with their um uh it's not janky, but do some bullshit with their Stygian smoke Vail. templates. Sigin Vale, thank yeah. you. Um to give my advancing melee vulpa reavers cover. Uh, as they as they run up the battlefield, um, we need a bullshit horn. I, honk it! I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I am. I am such a. I, I normally am a very very chill player, but I I have two type. I have like these two Titan Legios, and I was like, there is no way that I'm not going to do this because it's going to be funny as. Well, hell. I mean, also as well, you fall into that category where you don't have two thousand five hundred points of one Legio. So and, exactly. and and the two legios that you have are Tritonus and Vulpa. Mm. So well, <laughs> there wasn't no, much I option. Could, I, could, I could do it with Vulpa because uh, I have the um... oh the Warmaster, Warmaster, the yeah. iconoclast, the, yeah. the iconoclast one, the melee one for them, which oh, I still need to get painted. Um, so I I could do it, but a then I would just be mobbing myself as I did before in tournaments where just running Vulpa, um, you know doesn't doesn't do well and the uh, iconoclast isn't great i think you saw it you speak to mark mallard he'd probably say otherwise but uh okay 
I no, yeah, I, I take I, I retract that statement. <laughs> if you if you if you run Volper well and like very well optimized and and, and kind of uh, made a meta for them uh, as Mark has and so amazingly excellently done. But I just want free reavers to run up the board with double chain fists and Zoidberg on the enemy lines until you know something starts exploding. Now, are you aware that you're going to have to remember both? the combat rules and the shooting rules because when you're doing volper you mm. don't have to worry about the shooting so you might need to remind yourself mm. how to do the shooting for the tritonus and when i do tritonus yeah you're gonna have, have to, to worry about the melee tricky so like all of that ooh, in one head oh, i'm not sure i know i i honestly I, it's a common theme if i run like three reavers with identical loadouts i do that in a, in a lot of war games because the mental load <laughs> um capacity is is not that great so yeah we're gonna we're gonna rock out with some with some reavers we have a couple of warlords providing some fire support and uh some warhounds to to yeah nip at the heels as the uh reavers do their thing do the turbo macarena down the board <laughs> just going <laughs> through it's kind of free stuff. <laughs> and and this is of course like the, the princeps traits for the event are going to be randomly mm. rolled and not going to be picked. So I'm assuming your one of your princeps traits is gonna try and roll on their um Tritonis uh princeps traits in the hope of getting the double Stygian Veil. Yeah, there is a one in three <laughs> chance that this weekend this list evolves from stupid to like fucking insane if I get to Stygian Veil twice in a game. One in three chance if I roll out at the beginning of the weekend. And it will be Yeah, it'll be glorious. Oh, you'll have absolutely <laughs> no excuse to not get because... those Titans into combat. Exactly. And even if there is a turn where I get um you know, I get countered. Um oh, what's it called? What's stratagem called? Box blackout. Box blackout. Yeah. I get Vox blackouted. Um, either I'll have another backup Stygian Veil, vale, um, or you know, by then there's enough Reavers going down the board to, you know, not make that much of a difference if they get a little bit shot. So I can't. I can't wait. It's going to be so much fun. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's going to be fun to kind of experiment with some of these things. I I was originally going to be, um taking microphonicus um and i planned on taking the big boy the war breaker uh with me as well and i was i said to the guys can you can i bring this um because it might be cool to just plonk it out on the table and go right fight a war breaker and i've never actually played with a war breaker myself um however i'm i'm not sh i'm not sure if that's going to happen anymore because i have no idea how i'm going to get that thing in one piece halfway up the mm. country um it was touch and go getting it down the road to um, Beachhead. And it's 3D printed resin. It's quite brittle. I have a box for it, but I'm not convinced that it will survive the weekend if I do bring it. It may still make an appearance um, if I do manage to do it, but I don't really want everything to be riding and people getting their hopes up that they might get to fight against one of those. Um, I think if it does turn up, I think I will bring it as a showpiece to put to one side and not touch. Um, and cut to Alex drunk as shit in the hotel room, cradling <laughs> this thing like a baby <laughs> while its arms just like fall off and is like iron drunken grasp. <laughs> that oh, what's too. What's to the baby? <laughs> <laughs> that too. Um, Leave it at home, bro. <laughs> yeah. I, I was. Um, I was considering a couple of options uh, with mine. Um, one of them was uh, a Furian's Extergamus, uh, backed up by a Lania Scara Corsair. And this is when I, I had, had to take myself to one side and give myself a talking to um, and, and tell myself off. Um, because, yeah, I it's I, it's a narrative event and I didn't want to be that guy because... You know, the, the Furion's Extergamus is incredibly strong. Lania Scara on the charge are very, very strong. And, yeah, I figured 
might be a bit much and so they are going to be staying at home and i think i think i've settled on bringing one legio so i know i can take two and i can mix it and match it um but i'm going to i'm going to settle on just bringing the one um but it will be interesting to see what people bring because as i said earlier on you can, there are some spicy combinations which you can kind of do with two legios at this sort of points value um one obviously is the one that you're bringing well done you um extergamous furians with anything is going to be pretty spicy i do wonder how many warm masters we're going to see for the event i think people uh i think people will bring them it's because I mean, who's ever playing with a war master, right? Yeah, and I, but the other thing as well is the Psy Titan. I wonder how many Psy Titans we might see from the loyalist side. Oh, we'll get Titans. We'll get uh, Titans for sure. Yeah, and I was considering taking a Psy Titan myself, and they are spicy, but I've never actually used it properly. I think I've played one game with a Psy Titan ever since I've owned mine, um, mm. which is sad really you don't really get the opportunity you spend all this time painting it all and you don't actually get the opportunity to to properly use it um so that's kind of on the back of my mind as i'm i, I might do it but but yeah um like i say vulpa and extergamus furians for instance would be a interesting yeah, combo um cuz then you've got the two strongest parts of two strong legios that you could stick in there. One of the best shooting Legios in the game. One of the best close combat ones in the game. Um, yeah, I wonder what we'll see. I, 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 I wouldn't be surprised if we see quite a lot of kind of second maniples of Ordax, because you could take quite a hefty, maybe like 17, 1,500 points, 1,750 points of a primary Legio, and you'd still probably have enough points in there to fit in, you know, four or five um warhounds for either solaria or for um audax as an example mm. um so i wonder how many of those we're going to see but i i've settled on i think i'm just going to take my tempestus so i've got pretty much spot on 2500 points of tempestus i like the fact that they're all based the same they'll all look the same on the table there's a little bit of snobbery on my part i like everything to look and match um, whereas I've got different base schemes on different Legios, so having a Mars base is half of it, and having a city base on another, it just kind of I I, I would be annoyed with myself for that. So yeah, I was very close to rebasing my Bulper, and I was like, no, it's not it's not worth the the stress. No. Um, what is going to be stress though is uh facing a two thousand five hundred point force of um knights. Uh, it'd just be like playing 40k, basically. <laughs> <laughs> With the amount of activations. Yeah. I, <laughs> I haven't considered that. Um, thank you. Now I'm going to yeah, start well, crying in a corner. In your dreams. Yeah. 2,000 points was bad enough. However, I think I might be okay with that because my list has got two bellicosa volcano cannons in it. Uh, is that enough? It would certainly hurt. Like It will hurt, yeah, sure. Yeah, Um. I mean, two, two vol, um, volcano cannons to basically take out the Acastus Knights as early as possible. Mm -hmm. it, it would have to be... I'd certainly feel a bit more confident than, than against other Legios that might struggle. A Warmaster would rinse that to pieces with its 16-inch short-range fusion uh, plasma guns. Mm -hmm. um, they would eat that up. But, uh, yeah, I wonder if we will see any... I, I reckon we probably will. It would will. be funny. Yeah, and I think it'd be hilarious. Like, this is the thing, you know. Sure, it's like inconvenient, and at a, a, a tournament, it would be like, "Oh, what, what are you doing, bro? This is just funny." Like, it would be very, very hilarious. Basically, them moving each individual knight like a like a forty k army. Well, the knights have this kind of like uh, at, at large events like two k plus knights are they fall down on one of two sides, either you face the absolute antithesis of your force and you they just tear you to pieces and you lose convincingly um, mm -hmm. as a knight player. Or you're going to cause so much upset and pain that um, 
it's you you, you know that they're gonna walk all over it's it, there's never kind of a middle close ground it's always no. ruffle stomped or ruffle stomping um and a lot of that comes down to the legio that you're facing and the loadout that they have and whether or not you get drawn against another night list or not because that's not fun um two night households fighting against I would love to see each it. other um, i would love to see it that's it slog. would be a spectator event yeah it's it a definitely would be a proper yeah. slog because um, like i suppose if you're taking a load of lancers then they would pass each other's um ion shields and stuff but a lot of the anything other than lancers or a castus generally are going to be pinging off of ion shields a lot of strength six in there a lot of strength four if you're looking at kind of Questorus and um, Megaris and, you know, non-Lancer um, Serastus variants. So, and you imagine just a line of of Lancers doing the, the last uh, charge of the Rahiram against like a <laughs> Questorus force or something, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I wonder if anyone will do that. Yeah. Um, There'll be one. There'll be at least one person, I'm sure, who's got oh, yeah. 2,500 points. Or what you might also see is a mix of the two. Somebody might take, oh, yeah. um, you know, 1,500 points worth of um, Titan Legion and 1,000 points of Knights because mm. you could fit it in. In fact, you could even do 1,250, 1,250 quite easily if you take like a Ferox Maniple and Knights. Um, but you would be looking at the li- the lighter lancer variants, I think, at that point to fit in a full banner, a uh, full lance, should I say? So yeah, yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, I, I imagine there'll be one or two people to do that. I mean, there'll definitely be knights there, like just to fill out points, right? Yeah, those size events, like you have like a lot of leftover points. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna take uh, a maniple that I'd never taken before, um, so I'm gonna go with an Arcus maniple with the Warbringer and the um, Warhounds mm. and I'm going to also then have a um, Axiom uh, maniple as well so trying not to keep falling back on my default go for Ferox because that seems to be what I'm always <laughs> sort of taking um, but if I've worked out the points I might be able to mess this around again but um, I kind of worked it out that I could have a um, an Arcus with four, uh, three Warbring, three war hounds and a um, warbringer, uh, and then uh, an axiom, which is one war hound, one reaver, one warlord, and a second reaver. So nice, yeah, nearly two full maniples, but not <laughs> quite. Um, yeah, and um, try and use some of the kind of tempesta special rules. Um, like um, I'm going to take at least one. I might be able to fit in the second now if I don't have to take tracking gyros of the Kazmata laser blasters on the um, uh, Warbringer. So that extends my short range by six inches, which means that it takes me up to, I think it's like 22 inch short range on the um, lasers for the, the laser blasters for the um, the Warbringer. And because it's an Arcus, you can bend light and fire those guys indirect. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> Ridiculous. I I'm, love it. <laughs> I'm going to barrage my laser blaster. Right, okay. You do you. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, I always find it funny. Like, um played a couple of games against George and he took the Arcus and he had Gatling Melter. And it was just basically just hidden behind a um, a building, and we were saying like it, it was like some of the the scenes you see in like uh, Mogadishu or something where people firing AK forty sevens up into the sky, um, <laughs> be a bit like that, but with Titans firing up these these Gatling blasters up into the air and then them sort of raining down, like raining down, yeah, <laughs> um, blinking off the eye, uh, the the shields, yeah. But I was trying to find a you know a maniple that I wanted to. You know, I don't often take the Warbringer, so I wanted a, a reason to take it. Um, mm. And that um, particular maniple, as long as the Warhounds can see its target, um, then you only scatter by d6 inches, which on a five inch pie plate is is huge. Um, it's a it's a big big win. 
um because it basically means that you're unless you roll a six you're probably going to hit something um and it's not going to scatter too far so yeah that should be quite fun and then the arcus uh, uh, axiom maniple i think i'm going to run with a kind of a mixed loadout probably have a, a reaver in there with a close combat weapon and another one just set up for mid-range brawling or something and yeah. then that one the war <clears throat> hound in that one i think is the one i'm going to combat drop so you the tempest uh, tempestus kind of deep striking war hound ability yeah um because why not i've got eight stratagem points that i can play with so oh yeah yeah it's always good fun he can't move when he drops but there's something very satisfying about like a warhound just appearing on your back lines and in your rear um if i come across any side titans then that might be a good distraction oh, to kind of deal with that sure. um <clears throat> but i i haven't decided if i'm going to take them as loyalist or or traitor yet because i think on the day we're going to decide what we're taking but i figured i can be fairly ambiguous with the um mm. with those guys your vulpa less ambiguous they're definitely not loyal no um yeah no that that you can't get away with um yeah uh, my my vulpa uh they're a little bit a little bit too converted and corrupted for the uh for the loyalists um all this talk about them though has has made me want to see if i can get the uh iconoclast done in time and just run pure you have three nights pure... yeah and how much of it is left to do it means... Up is, uh, most of trim. it. It's trim and most of it. Um, it would be it's... a hilarious list to run. Yeah, I yeah, because it'd be iconoclast mutated up the fucking wazoo, right? Um, free free reavers, and then if I have points left over, either you know, tawny pattern, warhound, or up to four lancers, right? Well, your war master will be just over a thousand points. Mm -hmm. So you'll have about, I reckon, 1400 points to play with. Yeah, free reavers is 900. So you might, fish, you might be able yeah. to fit it in. Like, well, uh, if, if you're all close combat, it's, it, yeah, it's about, is it th probably 320 each, maybe? 330 each. Oh, well, that's before corruptions, though, aren't you? You're corrupting yeah, everything. Yeah, corruptions, upgrades. I mean, obviously, I can not take the piss and, and you yeah, know, calm them down a bit, save some points. Um, but I would get out activated to shit. Um, I really would. It would not. And, and yeah, I don't know. It would be really fun, though. I yeah. would love to use it. Well, this is a trade off, isn't it? Because I think I'm taking eight activations across my, my list, but I don't have the big thing you know I'm, I'm hoping i'm just playing the game normally rather than going for the big stuff which the more we're talking about it the more i think maybe i should try and fit in a, a side titan or i should fit in a war master because how often do you get the opportunity to use them you don't mm. um and my Graphonicus have got a war master already painted i could use those i've got i would be sick or i've got my I've certainly got enough points worth of Lania Scara, and they've got uh, an iconoclast with them. Um, oh, that would be so sick! I don't want to be changing my plans like three nights before the. Uh... Why not live in the moment, <laughs> Alex? Look, your heart is cooling out to playing something cool that you'll never, you'll probably not play for years. Yeah. Like, when are you? When are you next going to use that thing? Right. It's like, true. Uh, yeah. It's true. I, I, I want to win because I I'm you know I'm not the I'm not the best Titanicus player out there. That's your job. Um, no, thank you. Uh, uh, yeah, no, I know. <laughs> uh, don't, don't worry, I know. Um, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not the but best. Also... I'm not the best. I have, uh, but but I will take the compliment. Yeah, no, don't. No, it was, it was too much already. Yeah, I can see the head head inflating. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm pre feeling pretty good about myself now. Sixty yeah. percent of the time, I win. Every time, nice. That's, a, that's yeah. good. Yeah, very good. Um, yeah, I don't know. I I don't want to be gamey, but you need every trick up the in the book to it, to help you along to get to get well no uh, to get Volper into well get my Volper into combat at least. Um, 
yeah, maybe. Maybe we just go pure pure Vulpa. But like another thing that worries me is like, is the spirit of the event like they want you to take two different legios? Well, or... it does say we want to see players fielding multiple Titan legions working together. Right. So that's it, it is encouraged. Pretty, but pretty encouraged. It, but I, you know, and they've obviously given you that kind of um, benefit for for taking two. But I don't see it. I don't, you know, they're not going to be penalised for only taking one. I, th- I I think they just want to see some diversity on the board. Cause I don't know how many people are playing. I want to say it's like sixteen players or something. Maybe, maybe slightly more. Mm. So maybe they just want to see the diversity. Um, then but... how would you get cool titans that you know, like iconoclasts that are a thousand points? And yeah, the more I think about it, the more I'm thinking. When's the next time we're going to get to play four games of of two thousand five hundred points? Like, yeah, you know that mm. that's four games I would get in with my Warmaster, or four games I get in with my Sight Titan. You'd probably be sick of it afterwards as well, especially if you use a Warmaster. Yeah, the big problem is we've not tested any of our lists, and we've done no prep for this event whatsoever mm. compared to normal. Hey, we'll... <laughs> we'll turn up as, as, you, as you can maybe tell. I didn't even know where we were going in the country. I just knew that I had to get to Alex's for like five o'clock in the morning. Alex will Saturday. sort out the rest. And I, 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 my my partner, she kept asking me, uh, "Where where are you guys going this weekend?" And I was like, "Up north." Yeah, is it is it Wellingborough? Something like that. It's it's just outside Can of. You say Northampton, like yeah, it's it's again. just outside of Northampton. I think it's a town called Wellingborough, mm. or, or something that sounds like. Wellingtons, um, but yeah. I, the only problem is, is like when when I tested out when we were getting ready. Do you remember when when we had the game in our garage in my garage and we were testing out the lists for Swansea, and mm. I played with my list and I absolutely fucking hated how it worked and I had to change the list because it did not work how I wanted it to. I wasn't enjoying it, and I changed mm. it and had a much better time. I hope that that doesn't happen again. <laughs> so, I mean, here's here's my thing, right? If you if you run something like a like a Warmaster, especially, you're not you are going into that game knowing that this thing is not going to perform yeah. to its points cost. Like you have already conceded the fact that it is not going to be optimized. You are not pulling off some like crazy shit um, because you have this just like thousand point sink yeah. in, in your list. Um, so I think it will be a lot more tolerable than like putting together like a mi- a, a mismatch of, um, of, of you know different um, what are they called legios, no not legios manifolds, manifolds. Thank you, um, manifolds. You know you might find that you don't actually like the combination uh, of them working together or. You know, some of the rules maybe just frustrate you yeah. or are annoying. Yeah, the I'm only thing is, I, w- I really wish that I'd assembled my Warmaster for my Griffonicus differently because he's got la- laser bla- uh, turbo laser destructors in his armpits. I should have put plasma guns in there because they're so much better. You magnetize? No, I didn't. Even I magnetized. I'm lazy. No, fuck. I didn't know how to mag. mag- didn't know how to magnetize it because I got it right as soon as it came out. So, yeah, stupidly, it is glued in there. Um, mm. But they are, yeah, OP, <laughs> which is probably a reason for me not to take it anyway. But, yeah, may- maybe I'll have to have a look. I'll have to have a look. I've got three days mm. left to do something, of which one night I'm out doing something else. So I'm going to have two nights to paint up any last-minute bits. I believe. As well as edit this podcast and get it out in time. Um, good luck me, I guess. Have fun, but guess what? You'll get to do a uh, however many hour drive on Saturday. Yeah, it's only going to be about two and a half, three. So okay, that's right. Yeah, yeah. and it we doesn't get there early. Yeah, we? it doesn't start until um, well, registration is nine o'clock. Briefing is at nine thirty. So we should arrive there by half eight, nine o'clock, hopefully. Um, you know what I'm excited for? Service station breakfast. Let's go. Yeah. 
Yeah, there will definitely be a greasy, horrible food from the service station. Dirty and... McDonald's at like seven o'clock oh, in the morning. Yeah. Um, oh, there's there's nothing better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, it reminds me of. In fact, the last time that I did a trip like this was for Tom Stallard's other event up in Cheltenham, and me and Oliver did that, um, and that was another early morning, but it wasn't quite as early as we're planning on going up for this one. Talking of Oliver, what do you think he's going to take, Oliver? Oliver, um, you, you, if you've watched any of our bat reps, you'll have seen him, and he was also did a, um, a podcast with us last year on Lani Ascara, and he's also painted most of my cabinet. Um, he is. Um, a self-confessed, like chilled out player. He's not a tournament player. He doesn't enjoy the kind of competitive scene. So he is well in his element, excited for this sort of narrative weekend. Um, I know he's talked about a few kind of different combinations. What do you think he's going to take? Has he, has he not confirmed it at this point? I it keeps changing. See a Dicey message. I I'm not one sure. Second. Let's get let's get out the phone. Because he was cause... talking at one point about taking all Osadax because he was asking about borrowing some of mine. God, it'd be so sick. I yeah, that would be so sick. And they're, then they're really, really. Then there was, I think, an Osadax and Solaria mix. I think was confirmed at one point. Um, and I'm not sure yeah. where he landed on. I'm just looking at one of the photos he sent. You know what? You know what scares me? The number of models in these lists. Hmm. I'm looking at that and I'm like, oh, the the activation count. Um, ah, here we go. Okay, so um, we have got Furians and Laniascara. Oh, so he's taking the list that I jokingly said that I wouldn't be taking. Uh, yeah, Furians, Arcus. <laughs> oh, okay, Arcus is okay. But that... Oh, wait, no. Oh, my God. Uh, no, they are Solaria. Excuse me. They are Solaria uh, Warhounds. Uh... Actually, there we go. Um. Hell yeah! So yeah, swarm of Slario Warhounds with some fire support to back them up. Yeah, and that Arcus for the um war uh, for the Furians probably going to have um what's it called hunting all specs on them. So that make makes them mm -hmm. even less. Mu oh, that means that you're indirect firing on a minus one with the um Man. Warbringer. That's nice. Over twelve inches. Damn. Um, I mean, with a swarm of warhounds, if they're closer to you than twelve inches, you're in trouble already. Well, I mean, you. What are they? Scale nine. <clears throat> scale nine, aren't they? So you've only got a three-inch grace there anyway, because under nine inches, you're not firing any carapace at them. Um, exactly. But yeah, the hunting all specs. One less minus one over twelve inches is strong. Um. And I wonder yeah. if he'll be taking like um, the Camellia line shrouding on his um, Solaria. So harder to hit for him, adding minuses ones for him moving up the board and taking one less minus. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see what he does. Um, he, uh, I think he's pretty excited about having a weekend away. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. It's going to be so sick. And this is a um, business expense, guys, as well. You know, we, this, this is, you know maximal fire road trip staff meeting so mm -hmm. we'll put it all on legally the... this is a business expense yeah tax, tax rebate all of that kind of stuff write it off mm -hmm. yeah business meeting business meal business petrol mm -hmm. let's do it yeah we, we might need to order a hundred pounds worth of mcdonald's hey um, wait, wait, the wait, wait. Of the weekend. <laughs> we're not <laughs> We are not Johnny Core of the Battle Book store. Okay? <laughs> Do you reckon he claimed that as well? Oh. Our, our, our income cannot withstand a £250 uh, chicken order. Oh um, my god, yeah. Oh, I heard about this. Yeah, it was the chick the, the second chicken apocalypse at Beachhead. Um so it started the year before, um at the first Beachhead. Um and when we ordered um, the food. Um, they had to send. <laughs> they had to send two delivery drivers to deliver all <laughs> all of the food. There was so much food. <laughs> it had to be sent by two drivers. Um, there, no were, fucking way. there was over ninety wings ordered. Um, on that one, 
90 wings, a bunch of wraps. Um, 45 chickens worth of chicken. What the shit, Johnny? <laughs> many chickens died to bring you this dinner. Um, oh. So yeah, that was that was the chicken apocalypse one. And then I think um, the following year we did it again. I reckon since then they must have installed like a, a bat phone. Like a, a phone that recognises his number coming through. It's like a big old fashioned black a uh, rotary dial telephone with a big red yeah, sure. big red buzzer on the top that they pick up and go it's time. <laughs> yeah. It's like ghostbusters like we got one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the alarms go off. They're all like <laughs> I, I don't think it was as bad last time but many many more chickens died. I mean we were feeding like um 10 people or something. So it's not like no, I nearly said it's not like it was excessive. It's like six chickens of it, people. <laughs> it, it was excessive. Um, but, yeah. Um, yeah, that's kind of become a thing now, I think. So Beachheads obviously is coming around 10th and 11th of February next year. We are sold out, actually, as a quick quick segue. Um, so, yeah, we are sold out five months ahead of the um, event, which is incredible. Um, oh, yeah. I think we need to see if we can put on six more tables of terrain and see if we can get some more tickets out because that would make mm. that would give us 54 players for Beachhead next year if we put on some more tickets. But it's a lot of extra yeah. terrain That's that we need to buy terrain. and paint and assemble, although we will have a little bit more coming through of the Legion's Imperialis release so that might help a little mm -hmm. bit and we've got all of my stuff from um troublemaker games to paint up as well so the board that we've sort of started and then put on pause while we waited for legions um yeah for sure and like you know we don't want to we don't ever want to be in a position where we're taking away from other boards because i think mm -hmm. that's you know we say it time and time again that's one of the really big things we pride ourselves on um with our tournaments is uh the quality of our our boards um, which are all, you know, in my very biased opinion, pretty damn good, um, and very, very, uh, very thematic. Um, I kind so... of look to the future, you know, when I'm old and grey, and um, you know, we're no longer doing this podcast because I don't know, I've got arthritis in my hands and I can't video edit or something anymore. Um, <laughs> which, which probably it's won't a bit fucking dark, dude. <laughs> well, I mean, it probably won't be that far in the future because you know I turned the big four zero last weekend, Ugh. so you know I can feel God. it in my bones. Um, you know, I'm getting ready for an epic midlife crisis. Let's put it that way. Um, if if that if that cabinet of titans behind you didn't already scream midnight midlife crisis. Um, yeah, we'll see what yeah see what, what goes can, on in the world of Alex <laughs> when I bring out the big guns. Uh, but yeah, like there's going to be a time in the future where, like you know, may, may, we've wrapped up the podcast. We're not doing this anymore, or we've moved on to something else, a new game, or whatever. And I'm going to look at the amount of really useful boxes with all of that terrain in there and think to myself, what the fuck am I doing with all of this stuff? <laughs> mm -hmm. Because it is slowly taking over. It's like a creeping moss just slowly reclaiming back my garage. Um, Your sofa is just actually different sets of Titanicus terrain neatly kind of yeah. you know, stacked. So that, yeah. Uh, and my son will be like, Daddy, can I have some proper toys, please? And I'll be like, No, child, you will play with the Aeolus landing pad until you are <laughs> 25. And make sure that you put on the Samson freight, but don't touch it. You play with it in your brain. Don't actually touch it. Yeah. You can roll these dice. Yeah. And imagine what happens. <laughs> I, saw, <laughs> I, I saw a, a quite an amusing meme which summed up gamer adult life um, as as a parent, and um, there's a picture of a little girl and the mum, and it's like, mummy. I found your Barbie doll. Can I have it, please? And the mummy's like, "Oh yeah, dear, dear, that's amazing. How how wonderful!" Ha ha ha. And then um, the cut to a little boy holding up like his his dad's Space Marines, and it's like, "Daddy, I found these figures in your bedroom. Put it back." <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh yeah. 
<laughs> Damn. Uh, yes. So, yeah. Well, I think we're mm. kind of uh, coming to the natural conclusion of this episode. I think it'll be really interesting to kind of cut back in a week's time um, and sort of look at retrospectively what happened over the weekend, what we took, um, how we thought it went. Um, and yeah, then we'll kind of dissect in a bit more and do check out the, the vlog which Johnny's promised me he's going to do. It's going to um, happen. It's going to happen. It's happening. I've said it on air now. Yeah. And that is a legally binding contract. It so absolutely it's not, is. It absolutely is not. Um, but it will be done. Yeah. Um, I, it just yeah, don't keep... Whack in the comments whether you want uh, myself and Alex to do our our Warmaster uh, lists or whether uh, you want to see the mixed. It, it might be mixed. too late by the time yeah. this goes out. Because if this... if oh, I Really? Well, it, depending on when I get this out, the bags may already be packed. <gasps> Damn. Yeah. Okay, well, do it for me then, because I'm the most indecisive person around. I tell you what. Inst um, in instead, tell us what you think would be the most broken combo. Oh hell um, yeah! That you could do with two thousand five hundred points and multiple Legios or multiple Titans, and let us know what you think about that in the comments. Like, if we were bringing our saltiest A game are mm -hmm. no fun for anybody what would be your impression uh, your opinions as to what we should take um <laughs> i'd be really interested to see especially following on from kind of the uh the tier list episode like what what people's perspective of of that is um sort of from 2500 points of armagers well, you'd have to have at least a couple of regular nights to take them, though. Cause... No, you just like flip the narrative rule. You just bully the, the TO a bit. Let them take <laughs> you just 2,500 points. This army is themed. Army is... This is themed. The, th this is... the theme is I'm now getting a divorce from my wife because I've spent over 2,000 points on uh, 2,000 pounds on tiny armatures. Yeah. Oh, dear. Love to see it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I, I really enjoy talking about the tier list though, I really enjoyed doing the tier list and I think that mm -hmm. we might have to kind of look at doing some more of those. Now I know people are still crying out for the Titan Traitor Legions Legios ranked episodes, mm. so we might have to seriously look into doing that. Um and also maniples. I thought we could look at some maniples. Um everything oh, that's oh, available yeah. and uh, and tier list some maniples um yeah. for your so yeah, that was that was a good episode. I enjoyed recording that. It seems to have been well received. But obviously, do let us know what your thoughts were, not only on the episode, but also let us know your thoughts generally about the content that we're putting out on our listeners survey. Um, we do appreciate any comments as long as it's constructive. Um, <laughs> I can't put up with any more death threats through my email or people saying you shit in public. <laughs> um, please be constructive. Don't make me cry. Um, and yeah. Um, hopefully, kind of as we kind of get ready to go into 2024, we'll be able to bring a bit more sort of stuff. We're playing around with loads of ideas for next year. Is if you follow the podcast for any length of time, you'll know that we try and sort of shake things up every now and again, and kind of each year mm -hmm. sort of bring in something new. Like we brought in the light um, video podcasts one year, and then sort of this remote format. Um, once I think we we would like to return at some point to kind of a, an in person um, mm -hmm. podcast format, but for that we we need to invest in some different gear. Um, but if we do get to do that, then we can also then do some live at events um, content as well, which is something that we'd really like to do. We'd really like to be able to kind of give you a a look at Beachhead, uh, for instance, and mm. like a an on the day live stream or something of you know live studio audience yeah oh yeah so still big plans um ahead for us um yeah as long as you guys keep tuning in and keep wanting us to keep doing it hell yeah definitely i think um this year's been a busy one for both of us bit of a crazy one yeah. for both of us so uh hopefully next year fingers crossed touch wood all of that um will be a little bit more stable um, and hopefully we'll be able to, you know, have a look at starting to, you know, crank back up the battle report factory. Yeah. Um, and get some, you know, we're we're playing around with um, 
with some different ways we're gonna you know film our bat reps um uh for like you know just visual better visual entertainment and also making editing easier i think if we both had an unlimited amount of uh time we would be doing so much stuff but you know you really you really have to you yeah know. you have to prioritize you know because mm. you know we, we we have lives and we have different schedules and we only get together when we can get together um and so we have to decide whether or not that is a bat rep night or that is a podcast night and we know that you guys want regular content and bat reps for every one bat rep we do we could probably do three podcasts so mm-hmm. there is kind of that that trade-off although I have recently done some stuff to my garage, so hopefully we can, you know, maybe move in to my location where there's less going to be less setup time because I have most of the terrain and stuff, so I don't have to take it oh, over yeah. to Johnny's um, in the room that he's sat in now. Um, but yeah, it's um, it's definitely all kind of on the, on the cards at the moment, and uh, as we look to continue to um, progress the channel. Any parting oh, yeah. words of wisdom? Um, hmm. Please, someone, let me take 2,500 points of Legio Volpa, but use Legio Tritonus's stratagems. So you, Thank you. So you want Volpa, but with the benefits of Tritonus without having to take Tritonus? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. It's a small ask, right? You know, Dick. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll see you again next time on that bombshell. Uh, always the remember, channel, that's it. The channel's over. I quit. That's it. No, I'm done. <laughs> Headphones off. Storming out. Drops out of his room. No. Never again. Carefully rearranges one of his titans that's slightly out of place and then <laughs> slams the door on his exit. Oh dear. But yeah, thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, we'll let you know how it goes. And um, yeah, we'll see you again next time. So always remember to go big, go loud, and Mr. Johnny, what do we do? We go maximal. <laughs>